Uh, Porn Stars are People podcast. I'm Dan Friggin' Let him here with the Lady Koshka. Thank you for being here. Uh, literally, as we started, I got a random foreign knock on the door and had to deal with that. So I apologize. Um, thank you for meeting me digitally here. Um, this is fun. Where are you? How, tell the people what's happening, uh, where you are. I'm in California um, by the ocean, and I'm in my office. Without, yeah, without, with, I love, that's my favorite is the, uh, the amount of um, uh, secrecy. You're like, I'm near stuff in, in a state, <laughs> my things, uh, that's all you need to know. Um, okay, I, uh, this didn't make it on camera, but uh, you may or may not have been talking to your plants. Can you tell us what's behind you and, and whether or not they have names and how you keep them alive? Um, I just conquered my aphid situation that I had, so that's a win. Um, I do play like YouTube has plant music, so I'll play that for them sometimes. And um, what is that? it's what kind of plant music? This YouTube has plant music that's like vibrational, positive vibrations. No kidding. Is it working? Um, I have some new sprouts coming, but that could be from like the banana peels and eggshells I've been putting in their dirt, so. You've been putting everything and you're like, some of it's working, not sure which, but I'm not gonna stop anything. Yeah, I'm testing stuff out. And then I started, let me show you. Um, I'm um, propagating some, so I go on bike rides with my dog and I'll just like drive by and snag succulents from my neighbor's yard. Can you do that? Is that okay? <laughs> yeah. What? Can you, stealing, stealing plants. I'm, okay, I'm oh. for it, I'm not judging you. Not the plants, I mean just, I'll take like a little, Secular, like all you need is a leaf. Like all you need is a little leaf and then you plant it and um, it'll supposedly grow. But I need to wait like six more weeks to see if that's gonna come. And then like this one was by the beach and I got a big stem of it. So we'll see. That's great, I like that. I wanna do the thing where I hang like um, creeping plants over the bed, but I keep accidentally like killing them because I over, I think I over water them more than I underwater them. And so I, but I keep seeing like, like, like creeping vines places and I, and I want to do what you're doing. I want to just like pull it up, but I don't really know how to do that. I don't have enough knowledge and I don't have the climate that you have. So like I got a small window before it's winter and then I'm screwed anyway. Um, I have these lights that, uh, you know, cause I only have these two. I mean, sometimes the sun doesn't really get in. So I just turn on those lights and it feeds them too throughout the whole year. Yeah. So close to me. Well, you're crushing it. You got everything. You got it all figured out. <clears throat> well, thanks again. Thanks for being here. Uh, what has been happening with you? Uh, I hate that every, you know, aspect of conversation these last three months, four months has become the pandemic. But are you working at the level that you want to be working? Have you figured out new avenues with your career that like you didn't think you would be into? Um, my life really hasn't changed, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I've always wanted to work from home. So now I guess I'm more active on OnlyFans, which like before I'd have like three or four uploads a month, but now I'm like planning shoots with other performers, um, which is cool. And um, I do my social media consulting job on the side. I've just always been there. I just do people's Instagram and Twitter accounts. Yeah. So nice. that has changed. Uh, I've just been doing plant stuff and I make edibles on the side. Oh, no kidding. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, the um, a lot of a lot of legal weed uh, laws like like got held back because we went into pandemic. Because like I think Jersey was looking to Jersey and New York were supposed to vote on it. You've been in California in the legal state for a long time, but like the whole the whole dynamic is about to change with everybody else um, getting into the game. But yeah, I think. A lot of, like, so comedians are the same way where we've all figured out, like, every comedian I know has become a TikTok star now. So we've all, like, come up with new, like, processes of how to be successful from home. Um, but you guys, I feel like the porn industry, you guys were set up already. Like, you were already there, ready to rock. Right. And yeah, I can work for myself. No. And basically nothing, nothing basically changed. Let me ask this, this is a fun question I've been doing on my Zoom shows on Fridays is, um... On television now, they're starting to put on uh, game shows that are basically just games we played as kids. So, like right now on Fox, there's a game called Ultimate Tag, and it's just it's like it's just grown adults, athletic adults playing tag, 
and then they have the floor is lava, which is where you jump from couch to couch and everything's ground. Did you play any games as a kid? And would any of those games you think be good for television now? Um, there was a Baba Kutia and Kalechka Kalechka. I don't know if you know any Russian people. No, no. what is that? Um, Baba Kutia is just like essentially um, you're blindfolded and you try to attack people. And it's like Baba Kutza is this like Russian, like old lady that eats bad kids, I guess. So those are two different games. Yeah, and then Kalechka Kalechka is like you have a little like ring or candy or something in your hand and you go, it's like Duck Duck Goose, essentially. And you go through everyone's hands and they have their hands like this, waiting to catch something if you drop it in. And if you drop the treat in their hand, like I guess you run around in a circle or something. It is funny when we're, uh, when we're trying to like recall these games, we're like, you know what my favorite game was? And then we're like, what were the rules of that game? The rules were mostly just be like a lunatic kid. Um, and so the first one was like Marco Polo, not in the water. Um, I've never played that. Anymore. Marco Polo, yeah, Marco Polo is where you're in, the, you're in a pool and one person closes their eyes and they say Marco and then all the other kids yell Polo and you have to try to tag them under like in the water with potential danger. So in Russia, they were in Russia. They were like, we just don't, we're not going to go in the water. Cause obviously it's Russia. So we're just gonna do it on land, which is okay. way more dangerous. Yeah. There's obstacles. Like three. There's, there's more. There's like two more. Two more games. Yeah. That I would like to mention if that's okay. Please. Um, I don't know what it's called, but there's one where we'd wrap ourselves in a lot of blankets lying flat on the floor and then try to stand up without getting the blankets off of us. Interesting. Um, and like Heads Up 7 Up. Remind heads Up 7 Up was my favorite game in, in like elementary school. Once they like finally like, like let us know what that game was, uh, then we were like, we don't want to do school anymore. So you're a big you're a big cyclist, is that? Did I get that right? You said you um, were used to steal plans. Yeah, uh, I take my dog. If I wasn't for my dog, I would just sit inside all day. But she was kind of like I feel bad when she sits in my one bedroom apartment and stares at the wall all day. So then I'll go out with her and um, I put her in my basket on my bike and we just. No, go. you're the lady from Wizard of Oz. I guess. You're the you're the witch from Wizard of Oz with the lady. There. Or no, or no, sorry, no. Dorothy had the, the dog in the basket. You're the good. You're the good one. Um, Thank you. I, my dog's too big for a basket, so we always tried to do the like bike next to each other thing. And I made and she didn't understand it at first, so I made the a mistake of like I ran over like one of her, just one of her little toes right away the first thing and then after that for the next um, years she's like we're not doing bikes i don't know what you're thinking you're not smart enough to do a bike with me so we're not doing it and so so i like that so she so she's she's at home in the front and just in the basket she's just chilling yeah and she i have a little blanket in there and she puts her paws up and looks around at everything like closes her eyes and just has a good time just takes it and just takes the wind in the face yeah, we'll go up to the beach and take like the bike path along. Yeah. So. Are, you, are you one of these people that's like incessant about tracking? Are you just, are you biking for fun? Are you tracking it like with a thing? You're like, I did this many miles today. No, I just bike for fun. Maybe. You never know. <laughs> so you are, you're, um, you're on the, 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 the other, you're on the tall end of the spectrum for women. Yes. What does this create socially with people? Do people like do people get nervous around you because you're taller than a, like the you're taller than the average guy, right? So then that becomes like a, um, I've always dated shorter guys, so it doesn't really bother me. If anything, I think it boosts up their confidence because they're like, "Oh, I got this tall chick," and like they want me to wear heels when I go out. Right. Yeah, because they're right. They're like they're like coming after it from uh, from that perspective. Well, I got I'm not any really problems. I'm confident. I'm good. You be be you tall you be six foot six you. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. But I always slouched growing up in school. Like I was always the tallest one, so I'd always I did that for majority of my. Yeah, I feel bad. It was never uh, like even just looking back. Like I think we called the tallest girl in our school Big Bird. It was it's so mean. It's like I don't understand why we wanted women not to be tall in elementary school. 
all of a sudden it's different. We're not accustomed to it. I guess by nature we gravitate towards, I don't know. But no, but then, but then, but then we look at later in life, and and a tall woman is like, it's the thing that catches our eye from anywhere. It's like we see somebody tall, and we're like, oh my god, who is that? Like uh, I, I remember the I saw I saw an almost almost seven foot woman once, and I remember the, I remember everything about the experience because she had to like duck to get into the doorway, and we we're like, oh my god, who is this? Who is this goddess? It was like, where did, what is her story? What was she doing right before? That's the thing is when we see tall people, we think that they were doing something more important right before we saw them because they're taller than us. And like, they must have been doing, they must have been dunking. They must have been playing basketball all day. Right. We just like assume tall people have all these. That's all I get asked if I do softball or basketball. I was like, no, I just do online. I just did online PE growing up. So. What's online PE? Uh, you like go for runs and log your hours and your heart rate and stuff like that. But, Is that how you went to school? Uh, yeah, I did uh, some online classes. No kidding. For a while, so socially awkward as well because of it. Thank you. <laughs> I don't think you're as socially awkward as you claim to be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So what? So the, you said pretty much that if not for your dog, you would have gone full. Um, full hermit status. Yeah. Uh, what do you? I mean, are you? Do you cook? Are you all Uber Eats? How are you surviving this part of Don't Leave the House? Oh, um, I should show you. Can don't me, please take us. Yeah. Um. Well, I can't take you, but can are I? You run get you? stuff. I'm fine with that too. <laughs> okay. One second. <laughs> So that's Elena Kosh, because she's in, she's in California. Look at these beautiful plants, man. Um, I'm very envious of the ability to grow these things and and uh, and be successful. I don't know why. There's nothing more frustrating than killing all your plants. You feel like a complete failure. All right, what am I looking at? This is my food for like two months, probably. What? Okay, so what I do, let me just do one at a time. Are you a robot? So. Are you some no. kind of alien? Okay, so what is that? That's like a rose thing. Well, it's a rose mold, but <laughs> so that's just like a little rosemary stuck at the top. But what I do is because you know when you cook with herbs, they're always dry. You can never get full nutrients from the herb. So what I do is I just buy a whole bunch of fresh herbs, blend it up with like either a curry base or like a vape splash sometimes, or if I want like sweet, I'll do like a coconut water base on like this half with um, like ginger and turmeric. And like in the morning, I'll just take one of these guys, put it in the blender. Yeah. It looks really gross, but. Um, oh, that's good. And so, then I blend it up and I drink it. What do you blend it with? Um, like this morning I had one and I put it with my, I make homemade kombucha with a little bit of um, green dragon marijuana tincture in it. Oh just like two drops, so um, I put that in with it. You know, because it's a little sweet wine. I wanted something sweet this morning. This is fantastic. I like, like it. Like, mushroom, you know, I'm just like a normal person. You're like, hang on, let me show you how I uh, how I'm still growing as an adult and how I'm getting healthier every day. You grow all your own things. Do you think you can live off grid? It looks like you're ready. I have a generator and like survival food and like get out backpacks and stuff. No kidding. That's by the water and like we have earthquakes a lot. And I know. I'm like less than a mile from the ocean. So I know when that eight point whatever Richter scale thing hits, then like I gotta have a raft, I gotta get to the roof and I gotta have a left Maybe. Wow, you got it all figured out. This is what I realized the other day. I, I'm one of these people that watches all the survival shows thinking that like I figured out how to survive. And then I realized that all the skills that I learned on those shows don't apply to the pandemic, right? It's like, I know how to make a fire out of sticks. Like, how is that useful in my apartment for five months? Like, I'm, now I'm just here and I'm like, I, I'm gonna, can I make a fire? I'll make a fire in the living room. Is that helpful? No, it's not helpful. So you got to figure it figured out. You could, you could legit make it happen. You have a generator. You, you, so you make your own food. You have a raft in the apartment. It's a little inflatable thing. But is it a push button or are you going to be on the roof like trying to blow it up? It's a push button. <laughs> is it really? This is incredible. I don't know. What, you're very humble about how incredible your, your survival skills already are. I'm just a paranoid person. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I, the thing is, it was paranoid 
50 years ago, now it's very, very likely. Like my folks are talking about- um, The Great Depression. The Great Depression, it's, yeah, but it's beyond because, the, because now we have the Great Depression, we have uh, the, the, the pandemic of 1911, we have, uh, the, we have uh, hurricanes that are gonna devastate. There was a hurricane in New York City on Monday. Like this is where we're at. Like we're, the, the planet has decided they doesn't, it doesn't want us anymore. Because we're leeches and we just suck the life out of it. We're, yeah, we're the, what was the, yeah, what's the line from uh, The Matrix? We're the, we're the virus. We are the pandemic of the planet. We are the coronavirus of Earth. <laughs> that's bad. I, it is, that's, that's been, that's been my, my, like, lo, my, my short-term goal, uh, which is becoming a long-term goal with all the changes, is to figure out how to get off-grid and grow my own stuff. I was very excited. <laughs> I almost grew garlic and then I messed it up. You're in the perfect climate for all the things. Like I want to have a bunker and live underground. Like when shit hits the fan, just like we're out of here with a little cockroach. Yeah. Uh, just like in Oklahoma where there's nothing there, where there's no ocean. Right. Or Montana. I mean, yeah. Okay. Mon I'm just anywhere. Yeah. Wyoming will do. Wyoming's perfect. Wyoming's pretty. Um, and grow my own vegetation without pesticides and hormones and just be like, I'm from Oregon. That's where I was born. So I kind of want to go back there and like, um, just pitch a tent. Yeah. Which, wait, which part of Oregon? Um, Beaverton, but then Portland. And we moved, my parents moved over the bridge up to Washington because it's all the Russians live there. So. Oh, no kidding. That's where they are now. They've, they've, they've reassimilated to their people. Sadly. Yes. <laughs> Why is it sadly? They're everywhere. You just, cause you didn't live that life. You didn't, you were not, your parents are immigrants, but you're not an immigrant. Yeah. And they don't know that I know like, what they're saying. And like Russians just always talk shit about the people in public in Russian, not knowing that the person might know Russian. I know exactly what they're saying. Right. Oh my God. Yeah. There's something, yeah. Something about the, the movement of immigrants has changed a lot. It, it is interesting being the first generation that's here. And it's, it's interesting because I've, I've been going back through the thing. I was interviewing my grandfather and we were doing all this family tree stuff. So he was the first gener generation here as Italians. And every, every group of people that gets here, that next generation, it's the same vibe. It's just like, you just want to be, you just want to fit in. You just want to be an American. You want to like figure out how to be part of this culture. And, and, and your folks are, are a lot of times stuck. And they're like, no, it was better in Italy. And that's how we're doing it here in this house. And it's always that, it's always that push pull. So yeah, so they're so they're back with their people. They're just they just just a t just a little Russia in 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 Washington. A big church called Salamita. My parents don't go there, yeah. but we all get married within that church, and it's just like a whole. That's I mean, it's fun to have community, I suppose. Um, is California still where you're supposed to be locked down? Because you guys got uh, got outrageous numbers again. I don't know. Are Wait, you locked? What? Are you allowed to leave or not? Yeah, yeah. Um, I go out to Joshua Tree. There's a two and a half acre lot out there with an airstream with full hookups, and I'll kind of escape to. Like when COVID first hit, I was like, I'm out of here. But then, living in the desert's a nightmare, so I was like, I'm just gonna kind of do both. And so you have your own trailer. You go rent a trailer. Um, it's a friend trailer. Nice. Use, so. Do you guys do you shoot in the trailer as well? Like OnlyFans stuff. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah, I've done. Only fans and like like stuff for her on a vision, like the mainstream thing that I do on the side. Yeah. Nice. It's nice lighting, a lot of windows. Right. <laughs> so wait, it's just it's just a cover it's just covered in windows trailer? I never would have thought that, that should be that would be a good production vehicle. It's a great production. <laughs> I don't so, know, it's like a like burrito with windows. This it's like a burrito with windows, yeah. I, I think that was their ad campaign in the eighties actually. Sorry, I said that. Brand. So what? Airstream? You're fine. It does not. They're not. I'm not going to get a letter from Airstream. I promise. <laughs> I'm not going to get a letter from Airstream. I'm not going to get a letter from Yeti. We're going to be fine. Um, yeah. Let's yeah. just introduce us. Let's do this. This is Luna. Luna. I've had her since she was eight weeks old. And she's how old now? She's four. She's looking at my pre-made food. Oh, she wants it. Yeah, is this stuff gonna melt once over there? So, what's so the first one is a blender thing. What's the second one? What's the rose thing? That's also so that one I blended in like my ninja, but it's not like the fine blending thing. It's so it's like kind of thicker, more coarse, and like fibers from the time and the 
like mint leaves. Like this, I put the sticks in there too because it's like the most healthiest part. So you go so straight then, in, straight straight to blender, straight to mouth. No, you don't add any other liquid. Um, in here. Yeah. Um, there is some Bulgarian yogurt, like a little bit, just so I can get that, like probiotics and some flax seeds and other things. But I'll put this in a blender, like a, a more finer blender that I have with some kind of a liquid, just to make like a little shot of it or just sip on it throughout the day. But it's pretty on this side. It is very pretty, yeah. This could, I don't. This should be your business. This should be part of it. Do, do, so like a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of people get like weird requests, like. Uh, you know, the foot pick requests and like buy my old clothes. Are people trying to buy your, your, uh, your food concoctions? This seems like it could be a solid business. Uh, no, but I've had fans that are interested in like trying my kombucha because I put it on like my TikTok videos and stuff. Like, yeah. how I'm it. but um, my edibles, yeah, there's people, but I don't want to ship marijuana products over state lines. So there's that. Yeah. What would it take for you to start your own uh, kombucha? Ko what would it be? Koshka kombucha. Koshka kombucha. <laughs> Koshka kombucha. I like that. <laughs> or 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 could become koshka. <laughs> like you don't like that one. <laughs> Not your favorite one. Um. So you so you like you don't so you don't eat s s solid food, ever. Um. You know, I'll go to like plant food and wine, this vegan restaurant that's fancy. Yeah. Or um, I do love sushi with all my heart. Yeah. So um, I will allow myself that. She likes California rolls and um, salmon sashimi. And um, okay, yeah. We'll nibble on that. Yeah, dog. Okay. Yeah, dog. Dogs will absolutely crush a sushi plate without without any. Uh, um, She's a finicky eater. She only eats human food, and she's really. Right? Big. Well, that I, honestly, that's how I feel about you. I mean, you're already on the on the healthier end of the spectrum, right? So that's how I feel about feeding my dog. Anyway, it's like people that old expression when they go, "I wouldn't feed that to my dog." Oh, yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, if that's dog, if that's if that's like dog, whatever's in dog food, most of the time is not good. So most of the time, I'm making this one uh, like sweet potatoes. And she's getting like zucchini, carrots. Uh, she loves eggs. Like she's right there. Yeah, yeah, she would. I mean, she would love me to make her a salmon plate. That's like. That's like her dream. That's what she's dreaming about right now, actually. Is That's funny. Huh. What is it? Go ahead. All these um, pets have like cancer and like all these diseases and the, it's just like a money thing with a vet. Like they just, you know, just give them actual living food, not dry shit that doesn't go rotten for years in a right. bag. Like, what? <laughs> Would you eat that? No. Right. Um, the, the one that, the one that blew my mind away was uh, when I first got, I never had a dog. So when I first got it, everybody was like, oh, just get Purina puppy chow. That's what the puppy needs. So she was on Purina puppy chow for like a day and a half before I started reading the box. And I was like, oh my God, this is like mostly cardboard and like filler. It's like, it's like what you feed a chicken when you want to get it really fat so that you could sell it at a market. And I was like, none of this is real. None of this is food. There's no way my dog's on there. And they'll have a picture of carrots and chicken on the front. Why don't you just feed that to your dog and skip the processed shit? Like, I don't know. Right. right. And it is, it, and it, there, is, there is an enjoyment uh, to cooking for your dog. It's a bonding, definitely. It's yeah, well, it's the same thing. It's like, it's like cooking for your lady or for your guy. It's like, you, you, you know, it's like, although, you know, if I cook for my lady, she's not just sitting on the floor staring at me, hoping that I'm done soon. Um, but that's what my dog does. But, but it is funny. You can see the admiration in her eyes. And she knows. This is the, what's weird. Sometimes, like, we're, like, we run out of this. I feed her, like, like, food that's real food, dog food, but it's dog food. And, um... It's like gizzards, like dehydrated gizzards. And yeah, like, first ingredient is, like, is, like, food. Uh, like, you know, like sweet potatoes, like pe whatever. And, um, and so, but sometimes we're out and then I'll, but I'll, I'll wake up in the morning and I'll start cooking eggs. And it's like, somehow subliminally, she knows those are her eggs. Cause whatever day that we're out of food, she just knows. So she's just chilling. She's like, these eggs, these sweet potatoes, uh, this is for me for sure. So she's just, so yesterday she got cabbage, uh, zucchini, sweet potatoes, eggs had a beautiful breakfast so wait you never finished so she you, she's you, you had her eight weeks or since she was eight weeks how old is she now four and a half probably. four and a half years what's yeah. her worst what's her worst habit that you've decided is fine um she does one thing and that's because she's independent like um 
let me see. Um, like if she's like biting at her paw, I'll try to move her face and she'll like growl at me and I'll like, find your thing. Or when we're walking outside and I want her to go a certain direction, but she wants to go another one. Um, she'll growl at me if I try to like gink her. I'm like, okay, just do your thing. She's like, How are they getting? I'm like, okay. You know, yeah. So with, um, uh, that is funny. Mine, mine's funny because she has a weird, she has a bad habit of, uh, when we'll, we'll go hiking, she has a bad habit of trying to eat, um, trying to eat poo like she eats, she eats like other animals poo and i need to say that that's a vitamin deficiency and you should give her like tonic alchemy dragon herbs stuff and like even if she's well fed she will try to eat goose poo because because whatever it whatever geese are eating she wants that stuff so and then and she and she'll eat human poo if she gets a chance at it um send so, me your address and i will send you something to give her and you can send me your address later and i will send you something Okay, I appreciate that. And so, uh, but no, so she'll do this thing where when she smells the thing that she's not supposed to go after, mm -hmm. she knows that I'm paying attention. So she'll do this, she'll do this thing where she'll like pretend like she doesn't know what she's doing, right? Mm -hmm. she'll just sort of like meander over there and then she'll kind of like check and if nothing, then she'll go after it. Yeah. Or it's like, and if I catch her right before she, she, she like tries to eat this thing. No. I'll be like, hey, and then she'll just be like, I wasn't even, like, I wasn't going to do that. Like, I was not even, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, you know, I'm not that kind of person. That's my favorite thing she does. Their personality. Yeah. She's like, you know, it's, I'm not, that's not how I roll. And it's like, I know exactly what you were thinking and I know what you were going to do. That knows. She's so, do you, so you guys, she do the bike thing. So if you should happen to try to go biking without your dog, does she like freak out on you or what's the. <laughs> I never leave her home alone. You wouldn't do it. Yeah. Um, like when she was a puppy and I would be shooting consistently, then she would be fine at home. But now since I quit shooting kind of like two years ago, or if I'll do like select companies here and there, she's gotten used to me being home with her, taking her with me. I have like her emotional support and like another service dog thing. It was like almost a thousand dollars altogether for these two certifications. So I'm hoping California doesn't like get stricter pet laws, but I take her in my purse. No one really knows that she's in there. Right. Yeah, I take her with me. And when I go jogging in the morning, if it's like 7 a.m. like I did this morning, she's still asleep till like 10, so I don't feel bad leaving her at home in bed. She did. She sleeps till 10? Yeah. She's I mean, I'm in bed all day pretty much on my phone and laptop, so. She has a better life than I do. Uh, wait, so you said you stopped shooting two years ago. Yeah, but then like I'll shoot for select companies here and there are people that I like. Right. But I wasn't, I'm not like with my agent anymore. I'm not like being booked like crazy like I was before. It, is okay. your, is your plan to, it's weird because it's like, an, uh, it's the op. it's like the opposite of a lot of professions where like you kind of just want to, you want to front load your career and then just kind of coast from there, build some fans, right? And then just create some consistent content. Um, yeah. Do you think that you've, do you think that you've done that? Do you have, like, is it the kind of thing where you like plan, like, okay, I got three more years of doing an OnlyFans and then I'm out or how do you like, how do you plan that process? Or are you just kind of winging it? What's your? Um, like my OnlyFans only recently started getting more traction. I just had like stuff but after i'm always building something else on the side and my only fans is like funding that sure so yeah it is uh, so well so which yeah so i guess at which point are you going to become bored or disinterested or or with only fans or can you see yourself running it for 15 10 you know 10 15 years more i was bored with it like after i quit porn i kind of like let myself go and i was like eating whatever the fudge I wanted and all like finally and like sleeping all the time because when I was shooting I was like always up crazy hours or traveling and all that stuff so I kind of like after I quit I gave myself like five six months to just like chill the fuck out right. but now I'm like getting back into shape and um but I don't know what the future holds if there's even going to be a future so I kind of take one day at a time and there's always opportunities. I've never had like growing up, I did Mary Kay. I did like Amway and Avon and like always some kind of multi-level marketing. Like there's always so much jobs to be done. I've never had to ask for money or like even before sex work came into the picture. Like I've had friends who 
start GoFundMe's because they're like single moms. And I'm like, why would you, I don't know, like you can webcam from home or you can. The amount of time that it took to make the, the GoFundMe, you could have been putting in. Like, my eggs alone, like I can always fall back on selling an egg, hello. <laughs> but I kind of like the idea of it, but it's like 35,000 yeah. tops or like, like, you know, parts of my body that's a lot in the black market so oh yeah that's you've looked into that what's the what's the going right on your liver right now or part a piece of your liver obviously you need you need most of it um i think it's like uh fifty-five thousand. do you know that for sure are you making up a number you <laughs> list though like my mom's getting a hysterectomy in a week and i was like mom instead of just giving it to the hospital make them pay you for your insides like hello is that a real thing can you sell your uh, your entire uh, reproductive system as a woman and a man. Like your left testicle is worth more than your right testicle. I don't, right? I, don't know where you get this, I don't know where you get this list, but I really want it. I really want this to be like, um, like I want to put this on the screen uh, with the edit. <laughs> How much is my left testicle worth? And I'm, I'm left-handed, so does that mean it's reversed now? Does that mean because I'm left-handed, most people are right-handed, then my right testicle is the better testicle? It's feel like it's like 13,000. I looked at it twice in a day and that's about it. So like, I'm trying to recall. No kidding. It's, it's harsh. It's funny because that, um, I like the idea that there's somebody out there that like sold their ball. Cause they were like, I don't know what I'm going to do during the pandemic. It's gonna be crazy. And then like right after they sold their ball, then the stimulus package came and they were like, ah, oh, I was fine the whole time. <laughs> I know guys with one ball that they've lost like while skateboarding or some stupid accident. It's like, right gotten money for that instead of yeah, like, yeah if you if you lose your ball though you got to make sure it's like a worthwhile story because like that's going to come up a bunch in your life and you got to be able to like tell a fun one about it like 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 shoplifting and hopping a fence is not the best version of the i lost my ball story um, you need like I've, you need like shot out of a cannon something cool but i've i've my resume is really good so i've never worried about my future and i know People, and I like to help, I like startups. I've done, a, I like to help people yeah. start up. So I'm always. The big, the big fear, um, I would say one, one circulation before your generation in porn was that if you do porn, you can never do any other work again. Have you ever been uh, hired for a mainstream job where somehow it came up or somehow put you in a position where you couldn't complete the duties because they didn't like what you did in the past? I'm really afraid of that. I haven't encountered it yet because in my day-to-day -day life, I don't look like a porn star. Or I don't carry myself like that. Um, like no one would suspect. So yeah. but I do feel like if I did have an opportunity, like a mainstream one, I would feel guilty not coming out about that because I could potentially harm the brand or something like that. So unless I totally changed my look and like no one could tell. Yeah. Um, no, no. I, so you bring up you, your morality is 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 so strong that it that it, you're over, maybe that you're overshooting a little bit because I don't know that. So here's a here's a here's an example of like it's not harmful being associated with a sex positive thing. I host this podcast. I went to do a church show where I'm hired to do a church show for kids, G rated show. I know that it's a G rated show. I'm fine with all those things. Uh, the priest comes up to me an hour before the show and he says, hey, uh, do you do porn? And I said, oh no, I host a podcast that's uh, an acceptance podcast about talking to people and sort of trying to push beyond the stigma of the industry. And he's like, okay, let me, let me talk to my, my people. And then he came back and said, because you host this podcast, you can't do my church show that's G-rated. And it's like, there's no, there's no circumstance where my involvement in that show looks bad on the parish. Like you're not wholesome anymore. Yeah, but it's like, but, but like the whole vibe of that church in particular was like acceptance and like, um, like, you know, right. like, yeah, like. Um, now they're contradicting themselves. Right, right. And it became, it actually became a whole thing and the, and the priest might end up getting fired over this whole ordeal, but, um, but it's like, but so for, so to your point, it's, I don't know. Do you, have you have you had a video where you where you were like, if anybody sees this video, I definitely can't sell plastic pickles anymore. Like, there's not like you know what I mean. Like, in terms of my my porn videos, if you said if you said if it puts the brand in jeopardy, but I don't think that you've done anything in camera that would that would put a brand in jeopardy. I've done porn, but 
Yeah, but would that put a brand in jeopardy? Like, uh, banks don't want to be affiliated with us. They find out that we do porn. Like, girls, like, there's, you have to do, like, underground, like, money transferring because certain bank entities don't. Like, Wells Fargo is really, um, like, Christian or, like, religious. So that is, a we- that is a weird one, right? So then when you do the, when you do the campsites and stuff like that, are there places you can't send money to because it's going to come from an OnlyFans transfer and that's going to black you out? I haven't encountered that yet, but I've heard of such things. That's wild. That's um, terrible. And like girls are really poor and then they live in Idaho and then they move to LA and all of a sudden there's like their bank's like, oh, why do you have thousands of dollars now? Like that's a red flag and they kind of dig deeper and they find out and then like. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. That's just what I've heard. I haven't encountered that yet. Yeah. Well, knock on, knock on some wood if you believe in that. And again, I've always ventured off and I've done different things, bad things in life, just in, but I always come back to who I am yeah so um I just I don't have to label it I just like to be a good person and I know there is darkness out there and like especially now with like I don't know if you're into like the adrenochrome and like pedo gate like all of the pedophilia that's happening with like the elites in the world I don't know if you're into conspiracy theories or not I think we're finding out more and more that it's not a conspiracy theory. Uh, I think that there's a lot of things that are that are very clear and a lot of information that's coming to light that's very, um, yeah, that's 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 very legit. Um, and the idea that we had of this weird Illuminati people wearing like uh, like eyes wide shut masks and like eating human beings, which we thought was so far fetched, might not be as far fetched as what we thought it was. Um, but how does that how does that how does that how does that push into your your faith? Do you like you're aware of these mm-hmm. pockets of things that are happening, or yeah, I guess like growing up, my mom would have these like encounters in our Russian church where we'd go up into the mountains and be isolated from alien technology and just like do like twenty four seven prayers and stuff. And like last week, I was like, "Mom, can you like find me a really good Bible?" Because I just like just for peace of mind, I want it like on my nightstand just to keep like whatever. I don't want the devil near me. I don't know. It's like people do curses. And like that's really big in Oregon. There's a lot of witches that live in Oregon. And like I go hiking and you just find like stapled cow tongues to trees and like just weird like witch. And that's a thing. And like, anyways, like mom, just, I don't know. Just find me a good Bible. <laughs> just, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, these encounters, we got in church and like people would have like trauma they've experienced or like, like, I don't want to say like possession, but there are, you see people walking outside in LA all the time, just like talking to like whatever the fuck they see. And that's a whole spiritual world that we are not like aware of because we don't see it. But I feel like there's spirits and stuff out there. But anyway, we would pray. And like my mom was one of the like leader ladies. It sounds like a total cult, but like, no, no, I'm listening. Yeah. Like I would go there and like the first like two or three times I went, I was like, it's traumatic because all of that comes out. Like, it's like a five day thing of just like constant like prayer and yeah. Anyway, sorry. No, this is no, this is great. Please, I appreciate you sharing this. So, do you think you said you keep coming back to that? Do you think that that's going to be that you're going to get more involved in that lifestyle and with your mother with in those situations like later on in life? I don't want to because I've gotten so comfortable in like my lukewarm, half good, half bad lifestyle that I have for myself. Why? Why do you? Yeah, you keep saying that. Why? What's I mean, the, in like their eyes? I guess I don't view it as bad, but like I don't know. Do you? You have you have guilt to what another person's perception of like internal life. conflict of like how I was raised versus how I am now. Right. Like, should I be looking down at myself? But like I know I shouldn't. Because, like, my community of people um, feel empowered by, like, our sexuality and our openness with that, which is cool, and I love it. But at the same time, the back of my head, it's always, like, my upbringing affects that. So Yeah, well, and then this is what I was talking about with the traditional values of, of being an immigrant, too. The closer somebody is to another culture, the more they hang on to that thing. And a lot of these ideas that we've that we've sort of decided societally are... are are antiquated, um, still get held on to strong by a, a group of people that immigrates to another country because it's like, 
you have to hang on to some level of your identity. And a lot of times that's, that's religious. Um, and I don't like that because it is like an inner conflict. Yeah. It's well, like this tradition though. Like there's no, it was like hard to like find the logic in religion. Well, so from the standpoint of being spiritual and feeling the world and things like that, you know, as good as anybody that like, your sexuality and the power that you have over it and being able to acknowledge it uh, is not, it's not, it's not a thing we're creating. That's the thing that we were given as human beings. I, like, didn't feel real to you for. I was not a weirdly sexual little boy because of like factors outside of like, like that I experienced, like that was just a thing that was in me. And your industry does a good job of making people feel accepting of their impulses which are which we have been telling people for hundreds of years shouldn't be impulses and it's and it doesn't it just uh, like for again from whatever perspective you come from whatever religion whatever it doesn't make sense that there are people that have these sexual impulses and then try to confidently own them and then for us to like try to convince ourselves that they're somehow impure or against oh, in some way. against what it is to be a human being because it's been happening forever, you know? So we've labeled these people, but they've always been here. And sex positive people have always been here. And so we're finally getting an opportunity as humans to, to, to take those horns and repurpose them into a positive thing. So, so yeah. So, yeah, so don't so don't look don't look at your your empowerment in with guilt. Okay. Because you're 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 really you're putting a lot of pe you're pay, you're making a lot of people feel more comfortable with themselves. And sex is a big part of being a human being and a big part of once you get to the other levels of, for for certain people it's a big part of being married and being traditional in the values of whatever system you're in. So it all still ends up coming back around where sexuality is good. And with my platform, since I get to reach people all over the world, sure, like the initial hook was or like sex and arousal. But again, like my whole life has been that like anywhere you go, I work, worked at 24 Hour Fitness for a good bit. And like every guy that comes in, so it's always that sexual attention. But anyway, from like the initial meetup, I can from there direct their life or be like a positive influence in their life and be more than just a Lena Koshka to them. I can be like, I can help them out in other ways. Sure. So I never really want to like, my sister asked me if she wanted me to like, if I'd ever delete my Twitter or Instagram. And I was like, honestly, no, I know it was based on porn, but like how else would I get so many followers and people that I, that I can positively influence, you know, I'm not licensed or anything else to help people. I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, when you dig in on people that are licensed, uh, some of that is shenanigans too. So it, it's That's not right. about having an outside, um, you know, company give you a piece of paper. It's about whether or not you're connecting with people. And if you're connecting with people, and that's the thing, like what you guys do and what comedians do, it's like, if it's working, you know, if you go on stage, you don't get a laugh, you know, you're not, you haven't figured it out. If you go on your OnlyFans and nobody subscribes, you know, you got to make a change. That's not the case, right? People are following you. People are, are sharing. People appreciate what you have to say, right? Like, that's what I love about Twitter is, is, and it's before Instagram, but it's like, it's 80% in your brain. And the fact that people get retweets, that's not just because they set foot pics, you know, it's like they, it's what they're saying. Um, there's obviously there's foot pics on Twitter, but it's like, but it comes from what you're saying. And then you can appreciate that people care about your opinions and your thoughts. Um, so that is the, that is the one strange upside of, of what otherwise is, social media which i think a lot of us are concerned is not great but it is when you work from home what yeah what other opportunity there's no other way to reach however many thousands of people you can reach with your phone and your thing this in this day and age so what is i guess what is, what are you 
I'm sorry that that minister didn't let you do that interview with the kids. And stuff. I appreciate that. No, you know, honestly, like uh, I, I talk about it here, but, um, but the conversation went like this. He was like, listen, um, we're still going to pay you. But, you know, I was like, we're, we're good. Like I was so nervous about this gig anyway. If you're going to pay me and I don't have to do it, I'm totally fine. I got to hang out with my friend who was pregnant. Everything was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was all kosher, but yeah, but it was, but it, it's, it's, sometimes it's nice to have that little moment because it is a refocuses what you're, what you're doing and why you're doing what you're doing. And it, and it made me extra um, like committed to the message of the Born and Stars of People podcast and trying to uh, push that agenda that like, being sex positive is where we need to get to. Um, but yeah, but I'm sorry that you're, that you're having that. So your family is aware of, of, of what you're involved in. Yeah. Do you think they'll ever find a place where you guys see eye to eye on its value? Um, I think we kind of do see eye to eye on it. And yeah. what I mean in its value, like, I mean, yeah, I've done a lot of like charity work. I bought my mom. Like the first thing I did is I got my mom a new car because <laughs> right. she's a really shitty car. That always so I was like I've always and I've helped my goddaughter and like went to Africa and did, like that charity stuff. And then like I'm always, it's it's definitely blessed me. And I, yes. you know, doesn't matter how you make it. But will you ever see? Will she ever think of the amount of people that you're positively affecting? Oh, she doesn't know all about all that. Yeah. She just sees like the, the you know, using my body. Right. Part. Any job you use your body, like, I don't know. That is, yeah, that is the thing at the end of the day. It's like a good portion of professions are based on, and people that are fit for those professions are based on something. It's like, if you're a salesman, you got to be able to get in the door. Some, some effect of that is being attractive of whatever gender, right? You got to be... Uh, have some ability and so for us to pretend like like the physical body is not uh important and 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 a resource just like intelligence is would would be it's a lie like it's always been that like being presentable is part of being alive and we did that right deer don't necessarily no actually that's not true either because having more horns on a deer is is sexy too so every part of this comes around even tr you know a tree like you know everything about the way a tree connects with the the world and the tree with the tallest branch and the widest reach gets to be the biggest strongest tree so the physical appearance for all all creatures is important and that's why you've got that's why you've shaved your dog into that beautiful shape is because because that's the attention getting shape <laughs> And we're more than our physical. And I feel like even when like the Bible says it's God's temple and all that stuff, I get it. But I'm not like defiling my temple by having a penis inside of me. I feel like that's what my vagina was meant for. And why not capitalize on that while I'm, I don't know. Just like a whole bunch of thought patterns and like, different, I don't know. Well, it's again, it's, 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 the, it's the discussion where you go, if, if, it, if this were wrong, then it wouldn't fit right. Right, like how many perfect sexual scenarios have you been in? And you're like looking at somebody, you're like, we our bodies fit perfect, and that's not that's not made up. That's a real that's a real thing. Have you ever have you ever been in a relationship where like no matter which position you cuddle in, it just everybody fits correctly? Yeah, or like the, the pheromones. I'm really big on smells, and like certain people's smells just get me. Right, you're like you like the person's covered in sweat, and they're like I feel gross. And you're like, Ed, there's nothing sexier about you than right now, and the way that you smell, and the way that you taste. That's not we don't we don't make that up. That's a that's a real yeah, that's an outside factor. God made the pussy taste good. I didn't do that. Give us a clip for a reason, you know. Right, yeah. right, right. You know, and to some effect, you know, to some effect, even even my relationship with my dog is is contingent upon the fact that she can find a, a wedge that she can cuddle into. And it's like the you know, the, it, we said you actually you were you you pitched me before this whole thing that you're into geometry and the geometry of the human body is is perfect. It's fantastic. Even, you know, even the way even the way a hand can fit together, you know. 
it's um it's real and it's poetic yeah it's so, are you so you're are you are you an only child it sounds like you're an only child i have an older sister an older sister and so yeah. are your parents much much older than you guys did they did they start late my mom just hit 51 okay so i guess that's about that's about right what's do we know? Do we know where you want to tell us your real age? I know. I know in porn and in acting, you just you want to have like a range. What's your What's your porn age? Uh, I've always said my real age. I didn't know. Is that right? Yeah, I'm, I'm 27. You're 27. So that's about right. Your mom. Your mom was. Am I doing this right? Your mom was. Uh, your mom was 20 when she had 20 ish when she had you. 23 when she had you. Yeah. So that's pretty young. That's pretty young. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, and then they moved to America and it's like, here I am almost 30. And like, I have a dog and a one bedroom apartment. Like just what she's done at that age versus what I've done is completely like, I just can't live up to her. Well, it's not, we don't have the same goals as that generation. And, and when we look at the world, you, you were talking about a minute ago about how uh, there might be an 8.1 on the Richter scale and you got to get on the roof because there's a tidal wave coming. Uh, if you got to grab like uh, mo like eleven children, like they were having in the thirties, and like uh, and your dog, then oh it's not gonna work out. It's not gonna work out. Actually, and it wasn't the thirties. We were talking about the Great Depression before. It wasn't the thirties. Like the, the last time anybody had like eleven kids was uh, in Utah because they're Mormon and they're putting them to work. And in nineteen hundred, because you were like you weren't sure how many of these kids. It was like the Oregon Trail. You weren't sure how many these kids were gonna make it. Five, yeah. So it's a whole different vibe. And it's, it's very scary to even think about bringing a child around uh, into the world at this point in time. That was always the thing. I'm in, I'm in my late thirties and it was always like one of these things where it's like, well, do you not like kids? And I, I love kids. I'm a godfather multiple times over. And, and uh, but I was looking at the world and I was like, I don't think, I don't think we should be adding people right now. Mm -mm. You know, it's getting scarier and scarier. Like, I can't. Holistic is the word I wanted before. The holistic approach of holistic eating. Holistic lifestyle, Ayurvedic, holistic. Yep. So, you're very pro. You're pro marijuana. Are you? So when you when you put the drops into things that you're eating, is that a CBD thing or or a THC thing? It's a both thing, I guess. It's a combo deal. Yeah. Are you are you one of these people that that um, that separates the two and like and and focuses on things like well if your muscles need to relax you need to see I would prefer like CBD but I haven't found a hookup for that yet so I just get like pounds of trim from Oregon that's yeah that's all I use I don't oh, know how yeah the whole coast right Washington Oregon and uh, California are all legal states yeah very cool. Yeah. When I was a kid, I smoked weed in like middle school and high school, like just to be badass a little bit. And then I stopped because I don't like to like be inebriated. And then now I'm kind of dabbing back into it, but like in a not destructive mindset. Right. So. Right. It was a cool thing to do. Yeah. I, I never, I was always, I've always been a paranoid, um, uh, what's the other word I want? Like, uh, um, uh, um. It's like a pair, like a consequences dude, neurotic. I'm very neurotic. So I was always, anytime there was like a substance involved, I was like, is this going to be permanent? Like that's always been my vibe. So I was always, I'm always just like stayed away from, from that kind of stuff. Um, especially cause like, especially if when that was the thing, it was like, Oh, I'm doing it. Cause I want to, I want to relax. I want to like, I want it to be like a social lubricant. It's like, if you don't want to be yourself, you should, yeah, you should be able to do that naturally. Yeah, if you well, use if, this to justify their marijuana use, and I'm like, okay, you have anxiety. This is just covering it up. Why don't you deal with it? Right. You know, don't use it as a just to numb yourself from your problems. This is only gonna get worse. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, please, 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 please. I I talk far too much. Um, no, like yeah, like I think I think a lot of life is overcoming your own neuroses and weird things whatever they are and figuring out a way and blaming and using other substances to do it. It's not, it's not the move. Like, uh, like mm -hmm. I should probably would have been, if I was, if I was born three years later, I would probably been forced to be on Ritalin as a child. Uh, Most boys are now because the parents don't want to discipline them or they just don't like them being rowdy, but that's the testosterone. That's your, you know, you're just being a boy. Break shit. That's what we're supposed to do for a while. 
<laughs> women emotionally get into your heart as a child uh, and men just break shit because we don't know what to do and then eventually we both stabilize wow. Wow. and yeah. figure out That's how to normal. be yeah and figure out how to be adult human beings now kids are just zombied out and it's just horrible yeah, i'm worried again. about the next generation because it's just getting worse and worse like this vicious cycle of I talked to somebody yesterday who said their child wakes up at um, 6 a.m. so that she can get on the iPad two hours before. <laughs> Just, so her child has two hours into the iPad before 8 a.m. And, and that's, that's not, that's wild. That's a wild thing. There's a comedian what? who's gotten into some trouble lately. He, and uh, so I won't say his name, but the joke is still solid. And he said, he said, he said, shut the TV off when your kids are watching TV. See what their reaction is. Without, without saying anything, just shut it off in the middle of a program. The reaction is like, ah, 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 ah. He's like, that's not healthy. That's no. not. <laughs> like I get parents saying, like, go play outside and all that. But my parents did that to me growing up. But now I kind of not resent a little up, like a little upset because now our world is so computer driven and technology that's like i feel like if i was able to blossom into that more as a child like i wanted to i could have been something else but now since my parents are like oh go play outside instead get off technology it's bad now i'm um just not advanced in I don't think that's true. You run, you run a very successful Twitter and OnlyFans, and and uh, and then in the and in, in the process, you figured out that you should uh, also give your mind and body a bicycle ride uh, multiple times a week. I think you're. I think you figured it out. Uh, I think you're on the right side of this thing. Like some kids are really great at video games, and like watch your kid be a programmer when they grow up. Don't like say that they're, what they're doing is bad. Like you don't know what their future. But, you know, their passions are going to be, I don't know if you should, like, would withhold them and tell them to go play outside. Yeah, balance is important, but also feed their passions and don't tell them that they're bad. I don't know. Yes, here's my only counter. Some of that was created in response, in, 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 to like fulfill a need. So like one of the things we found out on doing a lot of trips on the road where we were inviting veterans and giving veterans tickets. We got to interact with a lot of people that were former military people. And one of the guys that we met someplace in like Missouri or Iowa or something was telling us that uh, his, a part of his job at one point was recruiting uh, successful gamers to the military so that they could operate drones. Oh shit. And so he would go on like Twitch and like find like the best people or whatever, like whatever the, the uh, uh, PlayStation standings, whatever the uh, Xbox, right? And he would recruit those people into the military. So uh, to a degree, that's not a natural skill. That's, you know, it's like at the end of the day, I love being on stage. I love being a comedian. I love being able to connect with people and find the universal truth of life and try and chip away at some tragedy by using comedy as a tool. Uh, but I would go live on a farm and raise goats and grow my own crap so fast. And you can't learn that. You or sorry, you can learn that skill, but you're not. You like you're not going to fall in love with nature at forty. You got to do it at like seven and you got to find your independence. That's the big thing is when you go outside and when you were forced to go outside, you found independence as a child. And sure. some people never find that. And that's, that's the, that's the worst one. Um, I love talking to you. Uh, I, I don't know that, um, that, that, a, that a 90 minute episode is what uh, people want. So we, we, I'm going to have to have you on another episode, but in the meantime, how do we find, how do they find you? How do they follow you? Uh, how do they subscribe to your OnlyFans? Tell us. Um, my Twitter is E L E N A K O S H K A X O X L. And my Instagram is the real Elena Koshka. Um, and all my links are in there. And I'll put all your links, send me everything. I'll put all your links in the, in the comments here. This is Porn Social People Podcast. We're on uh, Google Play, iTunes, um, whatever other ones that you use. We're on SoundCloud. We're on YouTube today with our episode, a wonderful uh, episode where we get to, to see 
uh, Elena's plants and her dog and her eating habits. So check that out on YouTube if you're only listening to us. Uh, we drop a new episode every Monday. I uh, appreciate you being here. Uh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, this episode drops Monday. I'm going to send you all the links and such and so forth. Uh, please subscribe to her and subscribe to this podcast if you like what you saw and heard. Thank you.